Hey everybody, welcome back to The Witcher 3 Blood and Wine. Thank you for joining me again. Hopefully you watched the last episode. If you did, you saw what happened here. We did a bit of the main quest. And um, we uh, kind of met up with somebody who was uh, buying some sangria wine from this guy at Castle Ravello. And um, we're going to use that information to uh, find out uh, who bought the wine. Um, we did like a handoff here. I don't know if I read this. Um, the Witcher's suspicions had proven true. Sangriel seemed indeed to be the key to finding the blackmailer. The steward of Castel Ravello admitted he had sold a barrel of wine to the Centrian nobleman. The Witcher and a unit of ducal guardsmen decided to wait in ambush for said connoisseur. Alas, the Centrian proved a notch too clever. When Geralt attempted to deliver the second barrel of wine, the nobleman was nowhere in sight. Some hired thugs found themselves caught in the ambush, and the witcher thrashed them heroically with the aid of his escort of guardsmen. The single captured rogue, when questioned, confirmed the bandit's leader was indeed the mysterious Centrian, who was said to be hiding somewhere in Toussaint. Next thing we're supposed to do is join Henrietta uh, at the uh, guard post in the port district and if we look at our map we'll see that uh, that is down here in Beauclair. Uh, we're not going to rush to do that right now. Uh, first we're going to go play another game of Gwent because we still have four more Gwent cards to uh, collect and um, we are going to uh, run here to this uh, fast travel point and fast travel to where there is some Gwent to be played. Play a game of Gwent, and then we'll see what we do after that. Maybe we will go ahead and go back to Beauclair. I'm not sure. I don't. I don't know. We'll have to look at our our quest list to see what we want to do. Uh, okay, here's the fast travel points. We're gonna travel to the Tourney Grounds, um, which is where there are some uh, Gwent games to be played. And once we get there, I'll switch my uh, quest to the proper thing. Okay, Gwent, and you'll see, what the, why am I not seeing, wait a minute now, quests, Gwent, I have it selected, what the heck's going on, why am I not seeing any of them on my map, okay, let's, okay, now they're on my map, I don't know what's going on, uh, but that's okay. So yeah, there's several people here at the tourney grounds, uh, like this barber, who I guess we didn't speak to before. He'll play some Gwent with us. But before we do that, I want to look at my deck here. I need to get, I need to start practicing on Skellige. Even though we don't have all of the Skellige cards, we should have enough to uh, put together a deck. Um, because when we when we get to this quest that is playing the Gwent tournament, we're gonna have to play the Skellige deck. So I guess we should start practicing this card here. Uh, I don't remember this one. When this card is removed from the battlefield, it summons a powerful new unit card to take its place. Well, that sounds interesting. So we'll throw that in our hand. Uh, we've got some Berserker cards that aren't, aren't worth anything unless there's a Mardrome card is thrown. Um, this one will allow us to pull somebody out of our uh, graveyard. Uh, this one here will is like a dandelion card. It'll double the strength of the other cards in its row. Um, I guess we could throw another Berserker in there. Then we've got uh, these guys with their tight bonding. It kind of sucks that they're only worth four, but... Um, I mean, I, I don't know. I guess the better cards are sort of the top, maybe? There's a Marjoram card. I better throw another one in there. Uh, and then, of course, let's see. We need 22... Yeah, 22 cards. I definitely want these great... Um, hero cards in my hands. Uh, we'll throw a Scorch in here. We'll throw a Decoy in here. And we'll throw a Commander's Horn in here. And ooh, there's one called Skellige Storm. Hmm. Reduces the strength of all range and siege units to one. Wow, that sounds like a pretty powerful card. We'll throw that in there. 
We're only up to 10, so we still have a ways to go. Um, what do I want to throw in here? Let's throw in a good old spy card in there. I don't know. And... This is... Okay, we'll throw these hero cards in here. We'll throw Ermion in there. I guess we'll throw Olaf in there. And then Gunter, Odim... I've only got two of these, and they'll muster with each other, but he's only worth two, and... I don't know, I don't... I think I'll wait till I get more Gunter Odim cards before I throw those in there, because they're not worth a whole lot. I'm only up to 15. Um, let's see, what's this guy? He's got something special here. Kills the strongest cards on the battlefield. I'll throw him in there, and um, we'll throw these two... Actually, I don't... Oh, okay, that's right. These two will tight bond with themselves. So we'll throw some more ships in there. We'll throw some clan on crate, clan on crate warriors in there. Um, and then maybe these guys. There, now I have a whole... I have a whole deck. Only six of ten special cards. How does that compare to, say, Scoia'tael? I've got 25, but that's weird. Only three of ten cards? Special cards? That's surprising. Total strength of this deck is 160. Skellige is 140. Um, Northern Realms, 157. Wow, only three of ten. What's considered a special card? Hm, I don't know. Uh, let's see. 157, 154, 160, 141. This is not a very strong deck, according to that. So what else do we want to throw into our... Um, hands. Do I want another Berserker card in there? Sure, let's throw him in there. Did I throw him in? Okay, there he goes. I had to click on him several times. We're up to 145. Boy, look how many four-point cards there are in this deck. Not too impressed. Um, who else do I want to throw in here? No, don't need any more of those. Do we want to throw in these light longship muster cards? Those are only good if they could muster with each other. So many four point cards. What a strange, strange deck. Hmm. Did I throw the him in there? These are in no order at all. Okay, I've got two of these. Let's throw another one of these in there. Okay, um, let's go with this. As far as our leader goes, we have, we have, we do have two choices. We have King Brawn and Croc on Crate. This guy shuffles all cards from each player's graveyard back into their decks. It doesn't shuffle it, shuffle it back into their hand. It shuffles it back into their deck. And I think that would be useful for mustering, right? Because when you, well, when you muster, does it pull from your deck or from your hand? Oh, summons all shield maidens from deck and hand. Okay. All right. And then this guy, units only lose half their strength in bad weather conditions. Hmm. Let's play with this one. This sounds interesting. Well, this will be our first uh, try at Skellige. Probably going to lose, but we're going to give it a shot. Welcome, my good sir. Need a bit of grooming. No, I really don't need a bit of grooming. Oh, is this not the guy I play? Oh, here we go. Uh, Gwent. Here we go. Do you play Gwent? Gwent? Maybe we could play around. Yeah. <laughs> I do like me some Gwent. Okay. Alright, here we go. Uh, let's see, I've got a Commander's Horn, I've got a Mysterious Elf, I've got one Mardrome. Uh, this card here is interesting, I don't really know... Hmm, it's gonna be interesting. It says, when this card is removed from the battlefield, it summons a powerful new unit card to take its place. I don't know what card that'll be. I've got this guy that will do some doubling. This card will let me draw somebody from the graveyard. Uh, this card is not very useful if he doesn't have anybody to tightly bond with. And then we've got a couple of hero cards. So, this doesn't seem like a very powerful deck at all. 
you know? I don't feel like I need this card and this card, so I'm going to trade this card in. Okay, we got this card, which will go with this card. Those two work together. Um, I don't have any other Berserker cards. I don't think I need this card and this card, but I could be wrong about that. Um, what do we want to do here? I'm afraid if I swap him, I'll just get him again. Which I guess doesn't really matter, does it? This card here will only double people in this row. So maybe I just made a mistake by getting rid of that other horn. Uh, if you look, I don't have anybody else that will live in this row. So there's no sense in having this card now. So we'll trade him in, and it's just a regular old six. Not hugely crazy about this hand. Oh, he's also playing Skellige. Okay. So he's doing that. Let's just follow his lead. See what he does now. Okay, he's going to go out and throw out another Berserker card. I do not have another Berserker card, unfortunately. Uh, let's throw this card out and see if we get one from our hand. Uh, no. We got a tight bond, but he has nobody to bond with, unfortunately. And I got a Scorch card. Okay, he threw out the Mardrome, and, uh, wow, turned these guys into 16s. Whoa. I did not realize that these guys had tight bonds with each other. Really? I mean, it was just a Berserker, wasn't it? Huh. Interesting. Well, say goodbye to those cards. <laughs> See you later, bye. Can't have those cards on my field, you jerk. <laughs> and he passes. Oh man, I just totally, totally ruined his spirit. Hmm. This card here. That's a neat card right there. What is this card? Is this the Ermion card? Yeah, I have this in my deck. This card here will um transform him into a bear. We know that the bear is worth 8 points because we saw it, but 8 isn't enough to beat him. I need 9. I hate to throw this card out, though. You know, I don't want to throw this one out because then I don't you know, it doesn't, I don't use it to its best advantage. Ooh! I should throw this card out. It's not worth anything, but I'm hoping that once this round ends, then it will change into its other form. When this card is removed from the battlefield, it summons a powerful new unit card to take its place. But I need to get to um, nine points. Um, doggone it. See, there's no sense in playing this card either, because it'll allow me to basically pull out the Scorch card, and there's no sense in playing it. This is, a, this is overkill. Uh, if there's a tie, I don't know what happens. I really don't know what would happen, and I don't want to find out. Hmm. I'm not really sure what to do here. Um. Well, we're just going to have to, unfortunately, waste this card. And, yeah, there's nothing to draw from the graveyard. I guess I can't draw a Scorch from the graveyard. Okay, well, we're going to win this hand. And that turned into an 11. Cool. Let's see what this card is. Hemdall. When the time of the White Frost comes, Hemdall will sound the call for battle. Okay, an 11-point hero card. Cool. Well, um, I'm going to try to beat him this hand, so I'm just going to throw out everything I've got. I've already got a good start here, but we saw that he got a lot of points really quickly. Okay, so he's going to muster here. That could be trouble. 12 points. If he doubles that, that could be trouble. Uh, this card's useless. I have, I don't have a card to do anything. Um, I guess what I could do is I could play this card and draw out my Berserker. I could do that. 
So I'm, let's go ahead and throw this card out. We'll pull out my Berserker. Because I don't think there's any reason to pull this card out. I mean, the only way it's going to be removed from the field of play is if I lose this hand. So we'll throw him out there. And see what he does now. Okay, he's going to pull something out of his deck. And that's... Um, oh, that card stays a bear. Interesting. No, once it transforms into a bear, it stays a bear. Huh. So watch, this guy's going to turn into a bear. And he is now a bear card. Alright. Well, he's making me nervous. He's got some really good cards. Okay, but he's got a tight bond card. That could be scary if he's got somebody to bond with. Unfortunately, these two guys won't bond with each other. I I'm actually thinking I'm going to lose this one. I don't think I have enough power. These are not special cards at all. I think I'm going to lose this hand. Yep, sure enough, they're going to tightly bond, and now he's ahead of me. He's probably not even done yet. I don't see what good this leader ability will do me at all. Okay, he's got another tight bond card. He's still ahead of me. I only got one card left. And he's got a Berserker. He's got 59. I'm going to throw this out. It gets me to 64. He has one card left. And he's going to play that. Okay. Okay. I don't understand why he did that. But we won. <laughs> I did not think we were going to win. Boy, this might be the closest margin of win I've ever had. Win by one point here and five points here, but hey, I didn't feel real comfortable with that deck. I don't, I don't, didn't really see what its strength was, but maybe once I get all the cards, it'll make more sense. But at least we won, and we get uh, 50 crowns from this guy, and we get another Skellige Storm card. Okay. All right. Well, that was our introduction to the Skellige deck. I do not completely understand the leader ability that he used that shuffled all the cards from the graveyard back to the deck. I can see that being useful with muster, so I guess that's it. Okay. Um, let's see here. I'm going to take a potion real quick, and then I'm going to uh, meditate until morning. And then we're going to take a look at our quest list. So, we still have this contract here, the Tufo monster, which for some reason scares me. Uh, go to the cellars after dark, and then we have this treasure hunt for this griffin gear, where we need to go to Fort Usar. Um, and then we have the main quest, and that is it. Let's go ahead and get this griffin gear. Go to Fort Usar. Use our fast travel... Excuse me. Use our fast travel points. Now, unfortunately, there's no uh, fast travel point that is close to Fort Usar. Um, so, let me see, do I want to go here? Not real sure which way I want to go to get there. I don't know, we'll go here. We'll hop on Roach and we'll run on down to the fort. Hopefully it won't take us too long. Come on, Roach here, it shouldn't be too bad. So it looks like we're gonna... Whoa, here's some wolves. Let's just run past them. Roach did get too scared. Oh, okay. Across this... Interesting, there's like little bridges here. Oh, there's a boar. Not interested in fighting that. So we will run on by. Ah, oh, jeez. Come on, Roach, you can do it. You're a strong, powerful beast. Coming through. Okay. Oh, and there, now we find the marker for Fort Osar Ruins. It would have been nice to have found that before we could have fast traveled here. But that wasn't too bad. Uh, you know, whenever I find a new marker, I like to read about it. So let's do that now. Fort Usar Ruins. Usar Castle constitutes part of the series of fortifications constructed during the reign of Duke Roger the Reveler. 
Sadly, it turned out his master builders were as fond of the bottle as he, the result being structural flaws in the building's foundations. The sloppily placed stones proved unable to bear the weight of the walls, and the castle collapsed. Many years later, the ruins were reconstructed into a small fort to house knights, knights protecting the high road, but currently it lies empty and abandoned. Okay, well that's good to know. We are just simply supposed to explore the ruins of Fort Usar. Uh, our tale of diagrams for Grandmaster level gear of the School of the Griffin is a sad one. But so be it, as not all tales need be happy. Well, there could be more happy ones in the Witcher world. If you are curious to read on, you should start by knowing that it began long ago when a certain Witcher was summoned to Fort Usar. Oh good, I'm glad I read that. Alright, well let's go on in here. See if we could uh, do some exploring and find more diagrams for the Griffin gear. And we've been here before. I don't know why I didn't find any of the diagrams then. Just looking for something glowing red, and we found it. Oh, it's down here. Oh, this is it. Wow. And here's the other three diagrams. Okay. Just like that. Captain Augustus Fireabra's Fierab report. Fireabra's? I don't know. Oh, okay. We got an achievement here. Turned every stone. The Witcher I summoned reached Usar on the 12th of September. He made a favorable impression. I had expected a cold killer, yet found myself speaking with someone who could easily be mistaken for a normal man, if not for his expansive knowledge concerning the habits of monsters, the two swords on his back, and the griffin head medallion on his chest. Jerome, as he was called, asked me a great many questions about the beast seen near Montcrane Castle. Based on my responses, he concluded the monster in question, in question was a Leshen. During our next conversation, the Witcher expressed his astonishment at being offered such a high reward, and one paid in advance before he even arrived in Toussaint. I had taken a liking to the fellow and wanted to be honest with him. Despite the vow I had sworn, I revealed his pay came entirely from a certain Moreau, a mage, who had decided to use this gift to thank our community for a warm welcome. Well, we know what happens after this. When Jerome heard the mage's name, he first went pale, then flew into a rage. He shouted, and I quote, gonna give that old bastard a piece of my mind. Then ran to the stables, mounted his steed, and rode off, leaving the greater part of his possessions behind. He was seen on the road to Mont Crane, but then disappeared like a rock thrown in deep water. Master Moreau claims he never saw the Witcher. Well, that's because Master Moreau was the Witcher's dad, and uh, he was trying to reverse uh, the Witcherness of his son because he did not like uh, what the what the Witchers had done to his son. So we saw the result of that story. You know what happened at Montcron. You were there. We already played that part of the game, Geralt. You should know this. Okay. Well. We have completed the Grandmaster Griffin Gear quest. As it says right there. So let's go ahead and uh, look for the uh, final um, quest for that, final text for that one. Okay, uh, it'll be here in the treasure hunts. That's, there's Manticore, here's Wolven, there's Feline, Ursine, Griffin. This Witcher's name was Jerome, and the monster contract dangled before him had been nothing but a pretext designed to lure him. For Jerome's father had simply decided he wanted his son back, a son who had turned his back on his parents. The problem lay in the fact that Jerome had despised his father, who was a cruel madman despite claiming to have only the best intentions. Their meeting did not end well for either, and though in discovering its nature, Geralt managed to assemble a full set of School of the Griffin Grandmaster level diagrams, 
he could not help but recall a grim adage that good intentions did indeed pave hell's floor. Is this pronounced adage or adage? I don't know, man. You know, there's some words I don't know how to pronounce, and then I try to pronounce them in front of you guys, and then I get embarrassed. So if I pronounce that wrong, please forgive me. Okay, well, that uh, went a lot faster than I thought it would. <laughs> a lot faster. So that is that. Let's go back to the uh, fast travel points, which I believe is right down here. And um, let us go ahead and um, do this contract right here. It's really the only thing we have left other than playing Gwent. So as a refresher, customs in Toussaint differ markedly from those observed in the north. The fashions differ, folk drink wine instead of rye vodka, beer, or mead, and the women are generally more amorous while men are more attentive to their own appearance. It is quite likely the two latter issues are linked. There is one custom, however, that remains unchanged both south and north of the Yoruga. Namely, faced by a monster problem, folk post a notice on a notice board, in which notice they promise to pay a reward, and then they pray a witcher happens by and reads it. The owner of the Tufo vineyard did just as this custom ordains, and as it happened, Geralt was the one to find his note. The Tufo vineyard was plagued by tremors caused by some unknown underground force. Yet these were no ordinary earthquakes, a phenomenon entirely unknown in Toussaint. The tremors caused noteworthy damage as buildings collapsed, wine bottles fell from shelves and shattered, and wine barrels burst, releasing into the dirt their ever so valuable contents. The vineyard's owner suspected some subterranean beast was the culprit, and Geralt was inclined to admit he was right. We are supposed to go into the cellars after dark. So let's go ahead, go to this fast travel point. We'll fast travel on down here to this place, which is right here. It's not that far away, really. Uh, we'll go to Flovev and travel up from there. And then once we get there, we will probably have to uh, meditate until it is dark. <laughs> Did you hear that? So we'll run on up the hill here. And is there somebody we need to talk to? Uh, nope, not him. Calm down. Calm down. I'm not going in there. Oh, here we go, Monsieur de Babu. You've taken up enough of my time. You were to go to the cellar. Okay, geez. Did we look around this place when we were here before? I don't know if we did. Let's just take a quick look around before we meditate. For nightfall. It's a pretty little place. <laughs> Meow. A little building here, isn't it cute? Like to look around with my Witcher senses every now and again just to see if there's anything interesting. I mean, there could be. Peasant working in the fields. I love the way that brick looks. Nice. Huh, they keep their doors locked. Somebody must have told them the Witcher was coming. It's quite a view. You gotta love it. Hmm. Let's see. Uh, let's go look down here real quick. Ah, we can go in here. Anything interesting in here for us? Or have I already been in here and looted the place? It's possible, you know. The heck, is there like a door behind this um, shelf? There is. <laughs> Weird. Okay, and a locked door there. Whoa. You alright there, Geralt?
Well, not a whole lot to look at here. We'll go up and uh, look at this building real quick. Tufo Estate. Nope, no going in there. Oh, Gerald made it down the steps without falling down. I can barely believe it. Okay. All right. Well, uh, nothing here, huh? What? So we are to go into the cellars after dark. It is not after dark. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, this is after dark, right? And it helps if you press the right button. Oh, I guess it's not after dark, is it? Well, silly me, thinking that that would be dark. This will definitely be dark. Let's go into cellars after midnight. That sounds like a great idea. You ready? The guard brings peace to our domains. Flout its writ and wrote oh. in chains. I wonder if I could have, un could have unlocked it before without having to wait till midnight. But whatever, we're in. So we're in the cellar after dark. And now that we're here, what's going to happen? All right, let's look around. Let's look around. Investigate the cellars using your witcher senses and also do some looting. Because that's what we do, man. It's part of our pay. Ooh. Some sounds coming from down there. Like a piece of paper here or something. Stock taking summary. Well, by all means, let's read that. The last tremors damaged several bottle stands and knocked over several wine barrels whose subsequent rolling wreaked further havoc. Among the losses, 12 bottles of the 1263 vintage, 9 bottles of the 1264 vintage, 17 bottles of the 1265 vintage, 9 bottles of the 1267 vintage, and 7 bottles of the 1271 vintage. In addition, two barrels of wine in the maturing process burst and split. The losses following this tremor proved greater than those after the previous one. These tremors shall be the ruin of me. Well, I hope not. I'm going to try to help you out, buddy. But first, I'm going to lo loot you. <laughs> Despicable. What's this? Shattered dishes. Got knocked off the shelf somehow. Shaken off, maybe? Uh, yeah, by tremors, you think? What do you think, Geralt? I uh, received a book, but one that you can't read. I'm just taking it, man. Ooh, we got a ma master's weapon repair kit. Whoa! Whoa! Figure out what's causing the noises coming from the cellars. Whoa, that's quite a tremor there. But first I need to loot this. <clears throat> Excuse me. Tufo Vineyard Work Schedule. Uh, recapitulation. This past half fortnight, I was forced to reassign three workmen to cleaning up the damage caused by the Earth's strange trembling a fact which significantly slowed work on the vines. Sophie remains in confinement and will not be able to return to work for some time, and later her effectiveness will be hindered by the presence of the child. Jean-Luc did not even report for work today with no warning and no excuse. When he finally does show, I shall have to have a serious talk with him. Who are these people? Sophie is in confinement. Her effectiveness will be hindered by the presence of the child. Boy, huh, I don't know what's going on there. Oh, here we go. There's something we could break through. Before we do that, something over here to loot that I missed? Oh man, I almost missed those blueberries and those eggs. That would have been horrible. All right, let's get our art out. Boom. A tunnel. Hmm. A tunnel indeed. I hear something over in that direction. Go into the tunnel. Let's get our s s torch out so we can see a little bit better. That's better. Um, what? Why did you put your torch away, dude? Well, you can see on our mini map that there's something beneath us running around. 
Uh, I don't know what it is, but it looks like it's way down in a crack here. In a crevasse. Um. Okay. Well. Whoa, okay. I guess I'm going this way. A Kikimore worker. So, we know we're going to be facing Kikimore. Kikimores, I believe, are insectoids. Or am I wrong about that? Insectoids. Kikimores. Yes. They are not a fan of insectoid oil. Or white honey. I don't really know what the white honey is for. And they're not a big fan of fire either. So let's put a little bit of insectoid oil on our sword. Get ready for that. Alright, Kiki Moore. Kiki Moore's. Kiki Moore's. Okay. Can't catch him on fire from up here. I thought I'd give it a shot. Man, I really don't want to drop down in there. There'll be many a Kiki Moore. Closing in on us. Quickly. But oh well. You gotta do what you gotta do, right? Hey, what's up? What's up? Kiki Moore? You're gonna be Kiki less here in a minute. <laughs> and your turn. Oh, 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 oh. Got him. This one's still alive. Uh, I think there's another one down here, isn't there? Yep, I hear one. So were these what's causing the trouble? Could be. Oh, here comes one. Hey, what's up, dude? I got something for you. It's fire. Okay, took care of him. Get it, Geralt swinging his sword one-handed. Holding the... Uh, torch in his left hand. Uh, huh. Well, we're not done yet. We need to go up this way through here. I guess. Okay, I guess I'm going to drop down here now. Geralt. Goes on and on this tunnel. Goes on and on this tunnel. Oh, here's a worker behind me. Hey, what's up? Did I get him? No, I don't think I did. Here he comes. He's dead. Carry him. Keep on moving. Don't stop. Oh, hey man, I want that unrefined copper ore. I could use that for something sometime, maybe. Two more, three more, showing up on my mini-map. Not liking how many of them are down here. Let's watch him burn. Okay, we got two of them real quick there. Come on, Geralt, swing. Geralt, swing. What are you doing? Geralt! Holy cow. I don't know what just happened there. I don't know if I got stuck on something or if that guy stunned me or what. But that was scary there for just a moment. Thought I was gonna die. Let's press F5, shall we? Well, we keep moving on. Uh, should be able to break through. Should be able to break through, says Geralt. Hmm. All right. Okay, so we can go that way. But there was another tunnel down here that I want to go check out real quick. Oh, hey, what's up? Geralt, swing. Geralt, swing. Oh. Okay. Alright. Oh, my pants are on fire. Okay, not really. Um, need to repair our trousers. Oh, here we go. We got um, some stuff and some ashes and some florins. Oh, I was hoping for a note or something, something interesting, but oh well. We'll have to make do with what we get. 
Okay, so there's a path this way and behind me. Let's go see what's down here. Uh, there's already some dead Kikimore here. So I guess I've already been here. We'll go up. You can do it, Geralt. I believe in you. Keep on Damn moving. It. It's getting away. It's getting away. Search the underground tunnels. Okay. Um... No new text here. I'm not really sure what's getting away or what Geralt saw. But uh, we'll find it, don't worry. I'm sure we'll find it. Hey, what's up? Uh, got some workers and a big daddy dog here. Okay, they're poisoning me. Or something. Toxic or not sure what. Oh gosh. Okay, I have the uh, wrong thing chosen. Okay, I, I guess I see why we want white honey now. Because we get toxic around these mofos. Getting more interesting by the minute. Okay, we're not done yet. We're not done yet. All right, let's loot these guys. More eggs. Should destroy them before the young hatch. Start prowling the vineyard. Okay. Damn it! Young could hatch any minute. Oh crap! Let's not. Uh, let's not. Let, we'll not waste any time here. Catch them on fire. Destroy the eggs in the nest. That is what we're gonna do. Are those eggs too? Why, why is that all red? Um. Why is it all red like that? I'm not sure why that's red. Examine. No kicking more duck this. Oh, okay. Tunnels are the work of something much bigger. Something with heavy, wide claws. Okay. Something with heavy, wide claws. More eggs? Um, yeah, I guess so. Cracked Kiki more eggs. Something's been feeding on them. Okay. Am I destroying them or not? Yeah, I guess. Are there more around here that I don't see? Oh, okay, this is... Yeah, where we broke through. Eat a little bit of food, get some health here. Well, whatever we're looking for, I guess, is in this direction. Oh. Okay. That's not all the eggs? Oh, two more here, I guess. Last one. Okay, good. We destroyed all the eggs. Oh man, I'm worried about what we're going to see down there. I thought that that big uh, Kikimore thing was going to be it, but apparently not. Um, let's see here. Let's get my health up to max. And let's see, let's do a quick meditate, get my potions back. And let's bust through this hole. No? No such luck? Oh, examine. All right, hold on. Let's examine it. Water coursing, underground stream. Mm. Monster I'm looking for lives underground, digs tunnels, feeds on kikimores. It is big, very big. Won't learn anything else here. Oh. Time to go back to the surface. Really? Return to the surface and talk to the owner. Interesting. Okay. Well, if you say so, Geralt, you're the boss. Get out of this frickin' cave. Uh huh. I just have to uh, find my own way out of here. And hope that I'm going the right way.
am I doing? Uh, I found a dead end. Good job. Good job, old chap. Well, that was not the correct way to go, so... Do I go... Up? That's where I came from, right? I came from up there, so we're gonna go this way. Or not. Okay. <laughs> uh... <laughs> I am going the wrong way. Um, go... Th no, this is a... Uh... Oh, look, there's more eggs here, it looks like. <laughs> I didn't know I could ard them as well. That's funny. Um, how does a... How does a witcher go about getting out of here? Oh, this is a dead end. This is where we just were. Okay. Not too happy about this. Okay, at least now I'm kind of getting a dotted line. So I was just here. Okay, that to the right is a dead end. And... Here we go. I missed this last time. Come on, Geralt. Come on now, I know you could jump up there. C come on. Come on now. Come on, Geralt. There we go. And... Go this way, maybe. Oh, man. I'm going further down. Um, uh, brother. Okay, this is a dead end here. Um, all right, what am I not seeing? <sighs> I mean, I see light here, but I don't see how I could get up there. I mean, this is a Tomb Raider. Um, here we go. Sheesh! Totally missed that. What's up, y'all? Sacre bleu! <laughs> what is the meaning of this? I'm paying you to slay a monster, not demolish my property. Property's falling apart on its own, what with all the tunnels under it. I'd fill those in soon if you don't want your building to collapse. Tunnels? Fiddle my farm, how did tunnels appear down there? Something dug them. A large creature. Also killed a few kikimors down there and destroyed their eggs. Consider it a half favor. Won't cost you much. Kikimor eggs? Yes, of course. Good work. Indeed, a reward is due. <clears throat> Madame de Bourbeau, I presume? Here you know something about the missing farmhand. Jean-Luc? Yes. We went to examine this year's seedlings. Something had been nibbling at them. Then we heard these odd noises. Jean-Luc went to reconnoiter and never returned. Hmm. Um, any distinguishing marks? Madame, could you describe Jean-Luc? Tall, exceedingly well built, hair black as pitch. Dear, concentrate. There is not a peasant that is not well built. <laughs> they work in the fields all day. He means scars, birthmarks, that sort of thing. Mm, then none, I suppose. But he did wear a pendant around his neck. A silver one. Silver jewelry on a farmhand? It was a gift, I believe. Or that is what he claimed. Mm, should be enough to go on. Then what are you fritting around here for? Get to work! Oh, I don't get to ask her the other question? Yeah, that sucks. Talk. Please. Mm -hmm. Perhaps I can Luke. turn these tunnels into an extended cellar. So now we're to go to the place where Jean-Luc was last seen. And if we look on our map, we'll see that it is not very far away. But we will go there next time as it is time for me to end this episode. So make sure you come back next time to find out what's up with Jean-Luc. Although I'm not really sure I understand how he fits in with the rest of the story. I feel like there's something I'm missing. Maybe we'll find out next time. 
Hope you guys enjoyed me then, and I hope you enjoyed this play session. If you did, why don't you leave me a like or a comment. Thanks for watching. Hope you join me next time.